Welcome, honor guests, to the land of TMS. I am the Busybody Baroness, and this is a recap of today's episode of General Hospital Monday. Child bad. Y'all know I had to do something because it was pretty interesting today, like a dang on. But we had to read in between the lines today. It wasn't Cliffhanger Friday, but it was something. Um. So let's start over at Sonny's because he was on the phone yelling at Selena. Some of some, you can't just be doing stuff without calling me first, Selena. And that was funny. Uh, and then that was a really quick conversation. Not, I didn't get anything out of that conversation. Not unless I'm probably, I'm sure maybe you guys picked up on something, but I did not kind of wanted to move along, but Nettie was sneaking out. Sonny asked him where he was going. He said he needed his own space. That's when Dex showed up and says that Betty was on her way up. Sonny told Dex to, you know, stay out of sight, but listen to everything that's going on. Once Betty came in Sonny, you know, they had pleasantries. He thanked her for taking such good care of Avery and blah, 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 blah. She said it was a great job. Um, but Sonny says he knows that Betty was supposed to take Avery to day camp. And after that, um, take them back to uh, Windermere or whatever. But anyway, he said it's a change of plans. After day camp, he needs Betty to stay there at his place for a few hours because he has a meeting that he needs to go to. And he's going to be home late. Betty, of course, said that wouldn't be a problem, and he walked her out. After Betty left, uh, Sonny called Dex into the room and told him, like, keep eyes on her. He showed him a flash drive uh, that Brick fabricated that has fake Pikeman information on it. He says once Betty is alone with, um, you know, babysitting and everything, she's certainly going to snoop through the apartment. She's going to find the flash drive. She's going to take it back to Austin and Mason. They're going to take it to their boss of Paw Tuck. And the flash drive has a tracking device on it. And so they'll be able to find out who this Paw Tuck leader is. He says he'll go ahead and take Donna over to Carly's. And Dex says he's going to handle what comes next. Dante went over. Let's go over to Metro Court where Dante found Olivia putting towels out at the Metro Court pool. She said she just needed to do something to keep herself busy. Um... She says he went home with Sonny last night. She felt bad leaving him like that, but she didn't know what else to do. She trusts Sonny and knows that he'll be okay. Once they talked for a second, Dante got a phone call about Anna's house being set to fire. He took off, and that's when Nettie arrived to talk to Olivia in the same clothes he was wearing the night before. He says that he wanted to see her, um, wanted to see how she was doing, and she thanked him for, you know, sticking up for her at the bar and everything and um he says that he's glad that she was okay he says he should he has to get going now and then that's when she asked him to wait she told him that she understands now that he's not ned that he's eddie and it must he says it must be true that, i'm sorry he must be true to himself and that's when he apologized for hurting her leo brooklyn and even tracy but he says he has to live his truth and Eddie is all he knows how to be. First of all, sir, you are a kajillion years old. Have you not passed the mirror? What year does he think this is? Let's just say he does. Okay, you think you Eddie May. You do not look like you looked the last time you, you, you saw yourself as Eddie May. So what are you thinking? How the Lulu are you? But whatever, let's go on. Um, Olivia explained to him after he says all he know how to be is Eddie. She said, I accept that. I respect it. And he thanked her for respecting him. He apologized for sneaking off on her the other day. And she said she thought he left because she was smothering him. He explains that he was freaking out about Tracy wanting to have him committed and that maybe she would have changed her mind. Olivia said it again. She says, I won't let Tracy commit you. She says, I accept that you're Eddie now. Um, she says, even if she thought electroshock therapy would bring Ned back, she wouldn't do that to him because that's not something a best and her girl would do. Let's go over to Carly's house where she was hollering at Joss. Now you can't be mad at Joss cause she didn't answer your phone calls cause she was busy with her pants on Dex's floor. So once they came in, she was like, I can't believe you left me in the police station all night, blah, 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 blah. But then Carly calmed down and was like, listen, I don't got no right to be mad at you. So they sat down and uh, Carly explained to Joss everything that happened at the bar and how she got in trouble and everything. She also explained to Joss how Sonny could have signed her out last night and Joss wondered why she didn't let him help. 
Carly says she felt that watching out for Sonny and his business is different than accepting help from him. Josh started complaining about how Sonny once again um, always gets away. And then Carly reiterates that if Sonny loses power, stupid girl, we'll all be in danger and targeted. Carly once again let her know that this is the way things are and she and Sonny will have to stay connected. Joss then wondered if this is the only reason that she and Michael have Dex watching Sonny. Carly pointed out that Sonny is with Nina now and she's with Drew and she's trying to focus on the future. Joss says she doesn't know how she can do that with Sonny always in the picture. That's when Carly says that she doesn't have a choice and that being in a never-ending war with Sonny isn't healthy. Josh says that she feels it isn't healthy for her mom either. And Carly says that at the end of the day, Sonny is still family. That's when Sonny showed up to drop Donna off and ask Carly if she enjoyed her time in jail. Um, she says, no, I didn't enjoy my time in jail. So he asked her why he wouldn't let him, why she wouldn't let him sign her out. That's when she told him, she was like, look, you've always been there to bail me out. And that's great. But I can't keep letting you do that. And that's when Sonny was like, I get it that you don't need my help. And he says, at, he says at the moment, he has a lot going on as it is. No, she don't need your help because we got Drew. He's not going to be locked up. For, between Michael and she's all right, she really don't need Sonny. At the end of the day, Sonny need her like she's still helping him. Let's go on over to poor Anna's house. We got set to fire. Y'all know, I just, when I saw... um. Anna sitting on those stairs, it made me wonder, like, are they going to rebuild? And also, when Valentin went in, he called it a townhouse, not a brownstone, right? But I also couldn't help realize that I think Anna may be in a brownstone. I'm going to have to Google. No, because when I did the brownstone thing, wouldn't that have came up? And Anna been living in her house for years, so no, because Valentin wouldn't have called it a townhouse. Anyway. Valentina and Anna were sitting on the steps. He was saying that he wished he didn't leave and go to ELQ last night. She says, you can't be around to protect me all the time. Anna admitted that she doesn't know if the arsonist was waiting for her to leave or thought she was asleep. Valentin knows that all of this started with his father and now someone is targeting her. She's sure Victor is smiling up from hell, she said. That's when Anna realized Victor's motives was more than getting her kicked out of the WSB. She knows that she hurt a lot. He, I'm sorry. She says she knows she hurts. A, she hurt a lot of people and a lot of people died because of her. She feared that someone is out to get payback, a daughter, a, a spouse, a lover, anybody, because she hurt so many people from the late 70s until now, pretty much. So it's a whole Kill Bill situation for Anna. You never know. Anyway, Valentin says that she doesn't deserve this. She, he says nothing justifies revenge. And that's when Anna asked, since when? She reminded him that he wanted revenge on her for years, but says that was, and he says that was before it was Alex who hurt him. She says revenge at the time feels like it will take away the pain. So the person after her feels that they're in the right. Um, I'm starting to agree with y'all, especially after today's episode. Valentin is not on the up and up. I think the new writers are making him bad again. I think I might have been right with my theory as far as Valentine and Alex. I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep calling her Alexis. Alex maybe being in cahoots. I couldn't find a picture of the person that set the fire, but I do remember. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna still look and see if I can find it. Like how we did the hook. Remember we were zooming in on the hook and stuff. But the thing with this is that the person's feet small. I do have a picture um, of the parts of them lighting the match, the thing. Their hands are small, like a woman's. Y'all know we went through this with who's the hook. And once we got finished analyzing hand size, feet size, unless it was Lucy. Because y'all know Lucy got some big old hands and feet, child. But anyway, it, it turned out to be Heather. We were right, right? So I'm sure it probably is Alex. But let's go over to the police station because Dante uh, was speaking with Anna, you know, getting some evidence together regarding the fire. He says, I'm glad that you weren't hurt. He says, and I need a statement from you. Valentine wanted to go to the station with her, but she insisted that uh, she, you know, do this on her own. Once they got there um, to the interrogation room, Dante went over the evidence with her. 
He says, of course, it indicates arson and explained that last night she left for a short run. You know, she told him everything that she knew pretty much. He says he remembered when he was there earlier in the evening and she said Valentin had gone to ELQ on an emergency. He says, when did Valentin come back? And that's when Anna says, um, I didn't see him again until this morning. And Anna asked, what are you getting at? Dante was like, listen, I'm just covering all the bases. He excused himself, walked out, made a phone call. Once he got in the station, he called to pull up security footage from the ELQ parking lot um, because he wanted to see when Valentin's car arrived and left. Let me tell you what. Eddie is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs right now. He don't know who the hell he is. Obviously, Valentin is up to no good. Michael is going to have so much work to do. Drew really needs to get his ass home immediately. I am sorry. Michael is going to have to run ELQ and Aurora at this point, huh? Because Ned is out there, you know, loo-loo-loo-loo. And then we got valentine out here wsb double agenting it up backstabbing anna probably probably touching these with alex in the bushes i knew them was her little feet you can't tell me them not her little feet anna is alex right she plays double duty for this role anna is three apples high i do not care how many layers of clothing you put on her sam i am that was alex in them ding on bushes that was definitely a freaking female in them bushes and I think y'all right, Valentine is all dirty piece of meat once a damn again. As soon as we start liking him. And like I said, I bet you that when Sugar turned to shit, Valentine and um, Nina is going to limp off into the sunset after they done caused all these kerfuffles in town. All right, ramble over. I'm not going to even get my pressure up because today is only Monday and we still got four more days to go, child. So anyway, Dante came back to the interrogation room and suggested they find out who had the motivation to set the fire. That's when Anna was letting him know pretty much the same thing that she told Valentine, like the just, uh, everything was sloppy. Um, if the WSB wanted her dead, she would be dead by now. Well, maybe that's what Alex wants you to think. Maybe that's what Valentine wants us to think, to keep us off the track, to make us think that it was an amateur who did this. I'm telling y'all it's right, and I'm so mad. Valentin just got his haircut. He looks so handsome. I love when he get a fresh haircut. Now I'm mad. It's done turn back into a dirty piece of meat. But anyway, Dante suggested um, that this is just guilt in her head. He was like, this could be clouding your thoughts, and maybe this still could be somebody from the WSB. So later, you know, Anna was like, she had got an epiphany or something. Uh, Anna did because uh, I think the word logistics came up. So I wrote that on the side. So logistics. And then when she heard the word logistics, she said she had to go to the Metro court and book a room and she took off. Well, we know the word logistics, you know, for Anna means in her mind, because of what happened, she probably wants to go back and look at the scene of the shooting again. That's why she ran to the Metro court to book a room and whatnot and whatever. But after Anna left, Dante got a call back um, and learned that Valentine's car never made it to ELQ at all. Okay. So, put it in the comments. Oh, he's out touching knees with Alex. Where the hell was he at? Why weren't you? Where were you? Why weren't you where you said you were? And anyway, what emergency at ELQ? Because I thought that too, especially when we saw Christina visiting with Michael. No way, yeah. Anyway, ooh, ooh, ooh. Also, in as well during the Greenland thing, um, when he went off to help Laura, do y'all remember Valentine did come to Michael a while back and talk to him about taking the reins of ELQ because he was busy? Just saying. Let's go to the hospital where Mason was being a creep, hiding behind the door, waiting on Austin to come. And Austin, he startled him. He said, oh, my God, I want you to go away. Get out of my office. What do you want? What are you doing here? But Mason was like, listen, we. <laughs> Let me stop playing with y'all. Because now I got to do a whole another freaking video this weekend on who is the boss of Paw Tuck 2.0. Do you guys want to know why? The ones of you that didn't see it. Because Mason, when he, um, um, Austin was like, what are you doing here? He was like, listen, he didn't put you through medical school for nothing. He put you through medical school so you can help us. It's no longer a lady a part of. Unless, 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 it's a couple of parts. You know what I'm saying? Like a ma and pa type thing. Y'all know what I mean? 
Um, that's the only thing that I can think of at this point. So get y'all list together because Saturday, guess what we doing? Who the hell is in charge? This is what it's going to be called, y'all. Who the hell is in charge of Paul Tuck? Because it's, it's, I'm sick of it. We going into a year and a half of this shit. It's almost Christmas time. Don't get me to rambling, y'all. I know they get my pressure up when they let these stories drag on. But anyway, child, Betty showed up because, oh, Mason said he was there because he still had a headache and he needed some medicine and he was seeing double after he got bust upside the head. I think that's all going to come out later. I think Mason, Carly, Olivia, I think all of them are going to run into each other again. Mason is going to figure out who the hell those women were. And it's all going to be a kerfuffle. I also believe that um, it might be some later side effects from Austin getting hit over the head. Like a coma, concussion, something might be wrong with him to further heat up the war between Paul Tuck and Port Charles. Because Austin just patched him up. He didn't send him for x-rays, MRI, CAT scan. I mean, he got bu- Carly bust him with a wine bottle, honey, not a beer bottle. So, I mean, you know. Anywho, later on, Betty showed up in Austin's office. And Austin got pissed because he was like, this is not a freaking clubhouse. Betty was like, listen, I got news for both of y'all. She says, I have got time tonight to search Sonny's place. And I will not come back empty-handed. And, um... Well, she left pretty much. It really wasn't a big dramatic thing. Mason, oh, so after she left, Austin says, he said something. I'm sorry, Mason said something that was interesting. Mason says, why, Austin asked Mason, why does the boss want information on Sonny and Pikeman anyway? Mason says, I don't know, but if he wants it, he'll get it. And Betty will get it for him. That's exactly what they said. How we know that now it's not a man, a lady, it's a man in charge. And it's like I said, unless they're a married couple or something like that. But that's when Betty left out the hospital and Dex followed her. Very interesting. And the fact that Brick isn't able to get any information on Paul Tuck Brick, even though, you know, it's, he knows everything. So I'm surprised. Okay, you guys, that's going to do it for the recap for today. I'm going to go ahead and get this out. Do y'all comments, a couple of comment videos for today. Thanks for listening to me, Jen Hands. Please hit the like before you leave, and I'll catch y'all in the comments.